stood still on Blueberry Hill and lingered until my dream came true. The wind in the willow played love's sweet melody. But all of those vows you made were never to be. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. Well, today we are going to make upside down berry cobbler and I'm going to use, well actually these are Saskatoon berries, but they're quite similar in look to blueberries. They are not similar in taste, but quite similar in look. But this upside down berry cobbler, you can use any kind of berry you'd like other than maybe strawberries. But blackberries, loganberries, raspberries, uh, blueberries, almost any kind of berry like that will do. So, bumbleberries, I think, are another one, um, or a mixture thereof. So let's get to it and make our blueberry cobbler. The first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which I have already done, and grease a 9x9 Pyrex, or oven-proof dish. Now I'm going to tilt the camera down so you can see what's happening on the counter here as we go about preparing this. Now this is a very easy to make recipe and uh, you'll find quite quickly you could anybody can do this one. So the first thing you're going to want is half a cup of sugar or white Splenda, depending which you want. I'm using Splenda, again, so my wife can enjoy the fruits of my labor, no pun intended. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> but sugar would be fine as well. Then you want half a cup of all-purpose flour. You can see how carefully I'm placing this in the bowl. Then you need a teaspoon, one teaspoon of baking powder. Remember that baking powder. So one teaspoon baking powder. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And that is the that's it for your dry ingredients. So then take your whisk or whatever you're using to stir and just blend that all together really well. And if you haven't got yourself a whisk yet, boy, you better go get one before I come looking for you. They're probably one of the handiest kitchen tools to have. That and a fork. A bowl might be helpful too, although I guess if you're really desperate you could use the kitchen sink, but I wouldn't recommend it. A saucepan would work if you didn't have a bowl. But uh, anyway, just get those well blended. Don't need the whisk anymore. The next ingredient is a half a cup of milk. Now you can use anything from skim milk to whole milk, doesn't make any difference, except for in the calories in the final mixture. So half a cup of milk. Let's see if we can get as much of that as we can. There we go. And the last ingredient for this part is half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And that's it. And now we take our trusty fork and we mix that all together. Now this will make about enough to serve, well, depends how big serving you need. Well, as I was saying, before my batteries died and rudely interrupted, you want to mix that all together. And then once it's mixed together, get your spatula. good stuff back into the bowl here so we don't waste any. And then we're going to take our grease pan and we're going to put this into the grease pan. Now I was recommending a channel for you to watch before 
Well, before I realized the camera had stopped, I was busy gabbing away. But check out Digger One. He's a fellow in England who does uh, metal detecting. And uh, I'm sure you'd enjoy his channel. Sometimes he takes his little boy with him. And he's a, he's a real cute little fellow. The dad's not bad looking either, I guess, if you're uh, a lady. Um, never really look at guys that way. I'm not uh, of that persuasion, so. But uh, anyway, really cute little boy he has with him and helps his dad pull stuff out of the hole. So you might want to check Digger One out. He had a, a contest for the last little while where each week he would post a question and in the comments you put your answer to this question and if you got the answer right, then your, your name was put in for a draw. And amazingly, on week four of this thing, I won. I'm still stunned. I'm not a person who usually wins anything, so it was a, quite a surprise to me. And a very pleasant surprise, so I promised him as soon as the uh, the prize that I won, or gift that I won, comes in the mail, I will do a video of me opening it. Now you want to get that spread across the bottom of the pan. Easiest way to do that is use gravity. Amazing thing, gravity. So once you've got that spread around in the bottom of your pan, fairly evenly, you might have to spread it around a little bit with a spatula just to make sure it's even so you don't have a fat spot and a thin spot. Once that's done, and again, if I didn't remind you already in this video, which I don't think I did, before you do any cooking, baking, or anything else to do with food prep in your kitchen, well, you know what I'm going to say. Wash your hands. There we go. So the batter part is just that simple, and then the next part is just to sprinkle your berries over the top. I have two cups of berries here. You can get by with one cup, but uh, everybody likes berries, so the more berries the better, right? So we sprinkle the berries over the top. Oops, escapee. move them around a little just to try and get them somewhat even. Put more in the one corner that I'm going to eat. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but there you go, you see? So normally a cobbler has the berries on the bottom or apple or whatever on the bottom and the batter on the top, but we're doing an upside down one. So it's now ready to go in the oven. It's just that easy. So here we go folks, into the oven it goes. And we set the timer I believe for 40 minutes. Four, whoops, this helps if you hit the timer button first. And it's off to the races. So I will not make you sit here and watch the baking process for 40 minutes. We will be back when it's ready. Alrighty, take care. And I'll see you in about 40 minutes. Alrighty, it's ready to bring out of the oven. 40 minutes later, seems like a few seconds to you. Have a look at our lovely upside down cobbler. Well, there it is, all baked and ready to slice up and serve. And uh, I'll just hold it up there for you. The berries are in top. Some of them are still loose and rolling around, as you can see. So if you're the one serving, you can kind of move them over onto your piece, right? So you get a few extra berries. But I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. It's uh, very simple, very quick to make. So if you're Having company at the last minute and need something to throw together, this will work wonderfully. Um, you can even use frozen berries if you don't have fresh ones. So, hope you enjoyed this recipe and we'll give it a try. And until Friday when I do the shout outs and groaner of the week, take care and God bless.